This is one of my favorite places, the Palm. I'm mainly doing this for the meal. I don't care. <laughs> Where are you from, bud? I'm from Long Island, Syosset, Nassau County. I'm from Jackson Heights. Oh, really? A nice Long Island Jewish boy. I used to go see you at the Westbury Music Fair. You're kidding. That's right. I used to work at all, all the places on the island. If you didn't do good down there, you had a lot of trouble. What was the first time you got up and did stand up? I'm 90 years old for kind of <laughs> so. So you're doing strip clubs? Oh, no, I, but close. What's close to a strip club? It's a melody club in those days. Yeah. I worked in Bayonne. Uh huh. Baseball right in the mouth to my place. Yeah. Anything I ever did, nobody ever wrote it for me. Do you know how I know that? I asked to write for you when I first moved to California. I called your representatives and I said, I'd like to write jokes for Don Rickles, and they told me to no. Thank you so much. Nice to see you, Jeff. What do you do for a living, Jeff? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Good luck to you. I spoke to the people in Bethlehem, they expect you. I'm gonna eat all that. No, I'm not touching it. <laughs> Who was the comedian that you liked that made you want to be a comedian? Jackie Gleason. Was great. Yeah, yeah. He used to come on the stage with me, the Slate Brothers. So that was a, a nightclub in L.A.? Yeah. And Lenny Bruce canceled and you filled in? Henry Slate, rest of the hired me. And all of a sudden, stars were coming to see him. And, like, and I always put them down, you know. It was like Magic City, you know. Don DeLuise now. Can you see him in a health club with that body? <laughs> Looks like a hard-boiled egg that didn't break on the dish. <laughs> Look who came in, an unknown. Why is he here? Is the war over? <laughs> when I was a kid, my grandmother's best friend was Tody Fields. Oh, I knew Tony well, very well. I used to go around the country and see her perform. And then she had diabetes. She had her leg amputated. She had all these bits about needing to get like a spare tire out of her trunk and having her other leg in there, and the place went crazy. I think somewhere in my head I thought, wow, that, that, this is the best job you could have. Thank you. Oh, I'm comfortable. That's it. But how, how funny was Tony Fields? Equivalent to like a John Rivers. Yeah, yeah. I'll do it this way. She was considered uh, one of the top ladies, you know. Was Lenny Bruce as funny as people said he was? Lenny Bruce in his day was considered very funny, but very dirty. What about Dick Gregory? Did you see Dick Gregory back then? Oh, yeah, I know him. Uh, who was the other guy? The other black star. Oh, Dave Chappelle? No, no. Red Fox. Close. Flip Wilson. It was... Uh, Willie Tyler and Lester. You shut up. On <laughs> What's his name? It became an open forum with the crew. <laughs> Will Smith. No, he named everybody but the guy. Richard Pryor. Yeah. He, he was good. He was a really clever guy. I have no memory at all right now. Like, when I think about, like, when my kid was two, and the only thing I can remember is, like, she liked grapes. Like, it all goes away. My kid is in class. There's 50 kids in the class, so that means there's 100 parents. It's 150 people I'm supposed to know, and I know four. And every day I see the parents at school, and they say, hi, Judd, and I say, what's up, my man? But I don't know what to say to the women, because you can say, what's up, my lady? And every day I get busted for not knowing anybody's name. Oh, well, it's a wonderful, sad story. <laughs> So I used to go see everybody at Westbury Music Fair, go see you and Tony Fields, and I saw Dangerfield back in the day. I wanted to meet comedians. I was trying to figure out how to meet comedians. So I had a radio station in my high school, and I started a radio show oh, really? where I would interview comedians. And so the first person I interviewed was Steve Allen, who was very nice to me. And that's how I learned uh, how it worked a little bit, like how to get stage time and how long it would take. People you know, told me it would take seven years to find myself. And then I started doing stand-up on Long Island. I realized how hairy I was the other day. Ladies, don't moan, I know it's gross, but I, uh, I was playing tennis, and I looked down, and I could see the hair on my back in my shadow. <laughs> and I was wearing a shirt, too, you know? It's just like... You never did a play or anything. I'm a terrible actor. I once auditioned 
when I was very young for a TV commercial. When I talked, I kept going like this. I couldn't stop pointing because I didn't know how to act. So I kept pointing and the director said, can you do it again without pointing? And I would start and then in the middle, I would just like start pointing again. I couldn't stop. And then he took duct tape and he taped my hand Honestly, to my leg. And then I never acted again. I was really humiliated. I thought, maybe that's not what I do. How's your acting? I went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. Yeah? Yeah, I was pretty good. You all know me. You, you, you know what I stand for. You know what I believe in. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe in the truth in the book of Genesis. But I never got a chance on Broadway, which was... That was my secret dream. That was the dream, Broadway. Now, you know, I saw you once at the Greek. It was Pia Zadora, you, and then Sinatra. And all of my friends said, we're gonna go to this show and we're gonna make a night of it. And then we took an enormous amount of psychotropic drugs. We were in the third row sitting next to Sinatra's family. I was a very young man when you would do things like this. I wouldn't do it now, I have kids. And then the drugs took effect as you went on stage. You pick my friend out of the crowd while he is tripping to do the samurai bit with him. I understand. And he's on stage and he looks at us from the stage. And you did that thing where you hugged him but wouldn't let go. And he looked at us like, like his mind was melting. I said to my friend, do you have any more mushrooms? And he said, no, the, that guy is not around anymore because he knew that I had so much fun that I was about to become a drug addict. And so then I never did drugs ever again, thanks to you. You never did drugs? Never. Did you have a drinking phase? Vodka, yeah. Yeah. Well, Sinatra taught me that. Yeah. Were you a kind of a boring person? Not till now. <laughs> I gotta pay for this? No, I'm still eating it if I gotta pay for it. So who pays for this? No, just put it down. Don't worry. Do you know this is an actual bill? This isn't even like a prop bill. Right, they'll take care of it. If they can't take care of it, we walk. Okay. Hey, you know, all kidding aside, yes. I am really, really delighted that uh, you were able to do this. Wow. Thanks so much. I couldn't be a bigger fan of yours. Happy and a healthy New Year. Now, if I just sat here and ate my chicken parmesan while you sat there, would it be a good credit sequence? <laughs> I literally can't remember a time when I wasn't a fan of Don Rickles. I remember watching CPO Sharky. I remember seeing him live at Westbury Music Fair and loving hearing stories about real people that he would rip on. I remember seeing him on one of the last Tonight Shows and he said to Johnny, well, good thing you ended it while you're on top. And I remember looking in Johnny's eyes and thinking, I think that hurt him. And he said, yeah, I'm gonna keep talking to Ed because at least he's got the Star Search show. I also remember he said to somebody when I was a kid, he just he turned to a lady and he said, hey lady, pull down your skirt, you're 40. And that, uh, that was graphic for a young man to hear. What it do, it's your boy Big Snoop Dogg, and I need y'all to go subscribe right now to the AARP channel, you know what I'm talking about, so you can see Don Rickle, and see his right hand man, no, his left hand man, Snoop Dogg, live and direct. Go subscribe right now, what you waiting on? What do you say? <laughs>